now um, what we're going to do is, what if I gave you an equation? And I said, hey, how many solutions does the graph have? Because yes, you could graph it and take a look at it, see if it crosses twice, see if it crosses once, see if it doesn't cross at all. right? But without graphing it, because even though you guys did unit two and you should be able to graph any quadratic I give you, graphing sometimes takes a little bit of work. right? So algebraically, we have a way to determine what the type of solutions are without actually having to graph it. And to do that, we, we have the discriminant. And all the discriminant is is b squared minus 4. Oops, let me write it like this. b squared minus 4 times a times c. When a x squared plus b x plus c equals 0. So there's a really, 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 really important portion of this that you, I want to make sure you guys understand. Remember when we were solving, and I said, guys, we ha before we start solving, we have to set our quadratic equal to 0, right? If you have terms on both sides, get them all to one side so it's set equal to 0. If, you know, if you have it equal to y or equal to f of x, replace the y or replace the f of x with 0. That's how we solve our quadratics, especially when there's two terms, two variables. So to define the discriminant, we, before we find a, b, and c, notice a, b, and c is only when the quadratic is set equal to 0. Okay, And I'm going to change that up for you guys as well. So um, make sure you guys understand that. Now, when you do b squared minus 4 times a times c, you're going to get a number. And what that number is is going to tell you what type of solutions you have. Um, so in this example, if you have a square number for your discriminant, if you find out you have a square number, if you guys don't remember square numbers, I listed out square numbers from my pre-calc class all the way over here. Square number, you are going to have two real rational solutions. So if you do b squared minus 4 times a times c, and you get a square number, 16, 4, 25, 100, 36, 49, 81, 144, any number you can take the square root of, your answer is going to be have two real rational solutions. For instance, for example, my two x-intercepts here is 0, 0, and negative 3, 0. My two solutions is x equals, my two solutions here are as negative 3 and 0. Are those rational numbers? Yes. Rational numbers, I didn't write this in here. Um, do I have more room? OK. Yeah, let's write it up here. Rational numbers, examples of rational numbers would be like 1 half or 5. Those are all examples of rational numbers. Fractions and integers are ra examples of rational numbers. All right, so what about what is another example of two solutions? Well, what about if we have a non square number? That is a number that you cannot take the square root of. For instance, like the square root of 5. Well, you can take the square root of it, but you can't, you're not going to evenly be able to take the square root. So you can't evenly take the square root of 5, right? You can't evenly take the square root of 11. Yes? You can't evenly take the square root of 20. So that's going to be two real irrational numbers. What are irrational numbers? Irrational numbers would be numbers like, like I said, you cannot evenly take the square root of, like the square root of 3. You can't take the square root of 3, so we just leave it like that. It's an irrational number. Another common irrational number is pi. Now, I will tell you, you're not going to have the discriminant. That's going to equal pi. So don't worry about that. Your only irrational numbers is um, going to be numbers that you cannot take the square root of, Okay, that we're going to discuss in this chapter. 
Um, what about when you have one solution? Well, if your discriminant is equal to 0, you're going to have one real rational 0. So if you're doing this discriminant thing and you get 0, then you have one real rational 0, or one real rational solution. I should be writing solutions, not numbers. And even though zero is correct, we're going to just we're going to use vocabulary as solutions. Okay, and the last one is no solution. Well, how do we know when the discriminant's going to be no solution? So if you have the discriminant and it's a negative number, any negative number, it's going to be no real solution. Now next class period, we're going to start talking about um, complex solutions and so forth. But in this case, oh, all right, I didn't run it in. So in this case, you're going to have no solution, wah, 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 wah. Um, <clears throat> negative number, no real solution. Or we could also write two complex solutions. And starting next class, complex solutions is what would be required of you. But at this point in time, if you just want to write no solution, that's perfectly fine as well. OK? Capiche? Caprende?